So I made myself a note in the middle of the live, and I remembered, and we're going to do it today. I'm very excited. Right, so there's a lot of punches involved, um, but the good bit is that they can be any punches that you have, any punches that you want to use. Um, I'm going to use a circle punch as the base for all of it, and then lots of other little shapes that I like. So if you've been watching a while, you'll see the punches I always pull out. So there's going to be hearts, there's going to be stars, there's going to be labels, there's going to be Mickey heads. All with the circle at the back. Yeah, but you can use any punches that you want. And I'll be using the November kit, but of course, you can also use any supplies you want. Right, shall we have a look at the desk and we'll see um, what we're going to scrapbook today and I'll try to talk you through how it all is going to work. All right, so we have got, I've done two pages with this kit so far and I'm really. I'm really digging the look. <laughs> Is digging a word that the kids say these days? Probably not. But I'm not a kid and I still say it. So, I dig it. So this was the first one. Layers of Plenty. Makes me very happy. This one that I still need to do the finishing details, but I did this on Friday and really liked how it turned out in the end. So it's a 6x12, a 6x6, and a 6x6 to have three patterns in the background. And then a bundle of tags and these little um, kind of small gatherings. Right, moving quickly. I'm going to do these photos today with our punches. And, and I'm, I've printed both these options. I know I'm definitely going to use the four by six. I might also add the three by fours, but I reserve the right to pull the three by fours back if it's feeling too busy with all the punch art. Um, yeah, that's my plan, okay. So I'm going to be using a nice chunky circle punch like this um, on a background and I'll go ahead and sketch straight away today. Ah, oh, Josephine, I'm sorry you're sick. I hope you're better though and yes, you get to, you get to be here. Silver lining. Who else we got here today? We've got Sam and Miranda and Jocelyn um, and RHH, which is different than HRH, asks, what's more? Shall we inform, uh, um, I, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce, should I just call you R? Okay, so shall we tell R what more is? So more is just the word more, M-O-R-E, but spelled like how a cat would say it, more, and often sung like how Ariel sings it, more, and um, yes. And that is what we call when we start putting stuff on the page and we go, you know what, it's got everything that it truly needs. It's got photos, it's got journaling, it's got a title, it's got some pretty paper, but you know what it needs? It needs more! And um, today's plan involves a lot of more. So there we go. Okay, so here's how this punch stuff is going to work. There's going to be a one-third, two-thirds background with two different pattern papers, and there's going to be three punched circles, but it's not quite that simple. Hear me out. So it's going to look a bit like this. Remember, as always, <laughs> my sketches are completely accurate and to scale, said no one ever. <laughs> so the one third, which this is like a quarter, see, I can't even do fractions is going to have half circles punched from it there. And then there's going to be this piece, the other side. Yes, and then there's going to be a little frame of the 12 by 12 background all the way around the edge. Oh, see, what am I like? What is that, Shamel? what is that? Okay, and then in these spots, we're gonna build all the fun stuff. There's going to be lots of more. So I'm going to punch all different things and pile them up here. Here's, this is what it's going to look like. No. 
but there's going to be confetti involved. There's going to be different shapes nestled on top of there. There's going to be papios for dimension. Um, yeah. Okay. And then the photo is going to end up over here. I'm not sure if it's going to be square on or straight. Or square on or straight. Those mean the same thing, Schmout. Hold on. If it's going to be square on or if it's going to have a little angle. That's what I meant. <laughs> um, and I'm not sure if it's going to be one photo or three. But that's the idea, and I was kind of thinking maybe that the small photos went vertically like this, and then the bigger photo was like that. See, that's ankled, but I reserve the right to change my mind on that. And then, you know, a paper, paper backing here, a mat along here. Yeah. Um, and then... I think journaling is going to fit best down here. Oh, or, 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 I have a journaling tag that matches the colors. This is the biggest journaling tag I've ever drawn. What my luck. And um, so journaling might go up there, or the journaling could go down here, or it could be both. I could take that tag and cut it in half. That's probably what I'll do. Let's draw that in. Okay, and then that means that the title needs to go either here or here somehow. Okay? All right. Ah, RHH is Rhonda. Hello, Rhonda. <laughs> okay, so if you want to screen cap the madness that is my planning sketches, let's get you some light there. You can have it right there. Okay, so that's what I'm going to work with, and we're going to use these uh, punches. Right, let's get, let's make sure that we can do um, the official stuff we need to do. Hi again, my name's Shamel. I teach online scrapbooking classes, I design scrapbooking products, and I help you use them to tell your stories in a creative way. It's not just my hobby, it is my job, and that means anytime I scrapbook on the internet legally, it's considered advertising. Do I know how to talk today? Hmm. Um, it's legally considered advertising, and I have to make sure that you are aware of that. So thank you for coming to watch my hashtag advertising. And if you ever want to support all this kind of stuff, you can either look in the description box below to click the links to shop for either this kit, next month's kit, some other kit, some other month. Um, anything like that is always fabulous. And uh, Or you can sign up to take a class from me at chamel.com. Cool, cool? Right. I think that's it for now. Oh, and if you're new to the Best of Both Worlds kit, you can find all the information about how that works in the description box. It's not something that you have to subscribe to. It's not something that you just get every month. It's much simpler than that. Um, you have to log in to shop, but you have the choice of what you get, what you don't, what you want from your stash, what you want from your local store. All of these things are welcome. Everybody's welcome here. All right? Cool. Let's go. Oh my goodness, Georgia says I'm on her big screen. Ooh, I'm glad I did my nails. <laughs> okay, so we need to pick a background first and then these two patterns. And I'm thinking that this pattern needs to come into play because I kind of want to pull this blue, red, yellow color scheme. So we're dressed like Woody and Jesse from Toy Story. And um, so obviously I don't have enough for that to be the whole thing. So that's going to need to be this smaller piece here. Then I need a background and I need a two thirds. I also have that journaling tag and I'm nervous that I'll forget about it. So I'm going to pull that now while it's on my mind. Where'd you go journaling tag? I saw you. And then you disappeared behind the other papers. No, come back. It's just here. Sometimes, sometimes they do, the, the supplies do this really good job of hiding in the stack. What's that about? Okay. There's a small world paper. Oh. oh, the small world paper could actually be, oh no. I was going to say it could be the other side, but I don't particularly like those, those blues are different enough that. I don't love them together. Okay, never mind, never mind, never mind. This is why I'm calling it a small world paper, by the way. Okay. Where did that red flag go? Okay, I might have to come back for it later. 
I know it's here. I saw it earlier when I was planning and thinking. Oh, there it is. It's because I've cut the tags into small pieces. Right, so this red tag I know I want on here somewhere. <laughs> Georgia says, is this the page to be called Goose Trip? It's not going to be this page, but I am going to use that title because it's adorable. Um, so, I think we need a, oh, we were going to use a howdy title with this because when Cassie and I were there, we got to our, when we got to the hotel. So, and um, for this trip, we did the service where you can have your bags taken from the train station to your hotel so that, and you pick up your park ticket so you can go straight in, which is brilliant. Um, but it means you don't see your resort and your hotel until much later in the day if you go to the park until close, um, like we do. <laughs> so when we got there, I'd been to this hotel before, but Cassie had not. And she was like, I feel like now we can get away with saying howdy. Because even though we're in France, we're in cowboy country, apparently. So I think we need to use howdy in the title because also Woody says, hey, howdy, hey. So, yes. Right. So that's going to go in there somewhere, but not that one. Now, what can we use for the other two thirds of the background? What have we got in yellow would be great, but we don't have it in here, do we? I think. Oh, see, I have a tiny bit of yellow. That's not enough. And it's not enough there either. Nope, okay. Well, I can use that as an accent, so I'll still have it out. But I need to find something that will work for two thirds of the page. Oh no! Do I have any yellows left from that doodlebug background pack? So, I used a lot of it last month, but not 100%. So I'm just going to have a quick look in October's leftover stash in case there's enough yellow in there, because that would be marvelous, but I have a feeling the answer is no. I have quite a lot of that one from last month. That's brown. As if you could not tell. Um, Georgia says that was a very British doorbell. <laughs> what do you think about that, actually? Okay. It's not bad with this kind of mustardy yellow here. And then I could use some brighter yellows to put in all the embellishment. I've got that little bit of the brighter yellow left over. I'll just double check that I don't have a yellow from the rainbow kit either. Silly me planning out outfits without consulting my November kit papers. How could I do such a thing? I'm an amateur. Right. If you've been around long enough, you know that I'm slightly obsessed about planning what clothes we wear at the parks. I have outfit spreadsheets. <laughs> And they bring me much joy, but no to the yellow paper. Okay, I think it's going to be this. Do, 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 do. Now, question then. The background, to go all the way around the outside, should that just be solid white? So where you're going to see it is around out here and here around the circles, but there will be pieces that kind of overlap there. And... Um, but there's a nice crisp white in this pattern, so I think it's okay. Um, oh, Debbie has sorted her leftovers from the previous kits by color because she's hashtag organized. No matter what country in, you're in, she's got it spelled for you both ways. Well, not no matter what country, but if you speak English, um, she's got it for you both spellings. I love it, Debbie. Um, Orangina says, what about the book paper from September? It has yellow on the back. I, don't, I definitely don't have that much of it left. Nope. I ended up using quite a lot of it right at the end. Um, George. Oh, Cassie's here. You can ask her yourself. Cassie, did you put your outfits on a spreadsheet? 
We did plan them together, obviously, but I don't know if Cassie used a spreadsheet or if that's too much like her day job. <laughs> um, just looking to see, but no, I don't think I have enough of that yellow from September at all. I have tiny pieces. Do, do, do. We'll make it work. White around the outside, I think. Okay. I have white now. I prepared that. And then I put stuff on top of it. Here it is. She didn't do a spreadsheet, but she did do many messages. Yes. Yes, we did. All right. Let's... I'm going to need a trimmer. What? Me? Use a trimmer? But yes, I think this particular design is going to require edges straighter than I can cut with scissors. The doodle bug that I was wondering, did I have any yellow left over? Well, here it is. That's not enough. <laughs> so this should be just shy of, can I do just shy of eight? Let's see. It is what I've got there. It's just over seven and a half, so that's where I'm gonna go. And then I need to take a half inch off the other side to get my white frame around. So this is going to turn into this. Lindsay's doing art bingo today. That sounds amazing. Yes, please. May we all come play art bingo. Uh oh. Oh no, we're just delayed. <laughs> I thought for a second it had frozen. I'm like, no, I don't have the brain space for that drama again. It's all right. No, we're good. We're good. Okay. <laughs> Lindsay doesn't want to give 22 kindergartners and first graders scissors. Oh, we all understand that, I think. Yep, yep. All right, so then this one's going to come over here. needs to be in the middle of that pink flower. And then again, half inch off one of the other sides. Gina is ahead of me now. <laughs> She's like, if you put them together and punch them, you won't have to line it up. And this is true. But even better. Are you ready? So I need a piece of scrap paper or just a branding strip or something, okay? And so I'm just going to grab a branding strip from the side of my trimmer, which hilariously just knocked over a mountain of them. So first of all, take off well, actually, you don't even have to do that, but I'm going to. I'm going to make it the same um, height as the papers that I've cut, but you could still do it the 12-inch length because we're going to be working from the center. Okay. So what I want to do is get that middle circle to be right in the middle. And for me, the easiest way to do that is a crease but I don't want to crease up my papers that I'm going to use. No. Okay. So we're going to fold these two so that they are, well, we're not folding them. We're going to place them so 
so that they are like that. Yeah. And so if I've got that in the center and I can see the crease, I know that this center punch is going to go there. Yes. Now, to get the other two, I'm then going to take this one, fold it into the middle, and I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to fold it into the middle. Yeah. Oh, Janice wants to know who we're dressed as. Woody and Jesse. Okay. Oh, and Minim wants to see the sketch. Sketch is here. Go. Now, that would then be the center of the three circles. Yeah. I've been able to mark them out without creasing my own paper. Could you do this with maths and a ruler? Of course you could. But I know that not everybody likes that and finds that scrappy fun. Folding, I can handle. I do actually quite like the maths of scrappiness, but it's okay. Yes, yes, yes. Now. So then the other question is, how far in do I need to punch so that it will still be a circle? Well, I actually want it to be less than half, don't I? Because I'm going to have that gap in the middle. Um, so let me show you on just a bit of scrap paper. Which I'm going to... I was going to tear it, and then I thought, no. Okay. So if I were to take this, and I can see roughly where my halfway mark is, I want it slightly less, like that. And then when I take this apart, I'm going to end up with a circle like that. Now that's even, see the could go a little shallower than that. Cool? All right. You ready? So I want that pencil mark in the middle of my bunch. And I want it to be a little less than half of the circle. Done. Then we're going to go over here and we're going to do the same thing. And now, because this pattern has a line to it that's straight, I can also follow the pattern to see where the top of the circle should end. Really good, really good, really good. Just making sure. Yep. And one more. Is this terrifying to watch? I don't know. What size circle? The biggest one I have? I'll measure it in just a second. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I have the right line. Yeah. Okay. Done. <laughs> Lindsay's nervous. It's done, it's done. And it works. Yes? Are we all happy? Yay! <laughs> right, what size is this circle punch? Let's take a whole one and measure across. So this is two inches. It's a two inch circle punch. Okay? Two inch circle punch that I just stuck the scrap paper in for all time. No, I got it up. Right. Now, ink all the edges. Glue these two pieces down. <laughs> I love the range of emotion. 
emotions in the comments as I was doing that. But it works. It works. If you want if you end up liking the look, but that was nerve nerve-wracking for you, punch it on scrap paper first. Trace it where you want it to be, and then go line up your um your tracing with the real paper. Yeah. So you could just make a draft and make sure you're happy with it before you do the real thing. And then you could trace the whole curve. That's much easier than just eyeballing where the center is. But you know me. We need a little drama, yeah? Just a little bit. We don't want we don't big, want big drama. We want small paper craft drama that we can handle. Just a little bit of suspense. Yes. Speaking of which, there's a safety precaution on my desk I need to sort. There we go. Good morning. Well, it's not morning. Good afternoon, sea monkeys. They're still here, by the way. You watch me scrap. I sit on the desk. Debbie says she doesn't have a two inch punch. She wonders if she could use her silhouette to cut it out. Yes, of course you could. So you could just, and you could make this into a double page if you're using the silhouette because you could take your, your screen on the silhouette. All you want is three two inch circles. And um, so you could cut that from one paper and then send the second paper through and then slice them. But then you'd also have, if you were starting with two whole sheets of paper, you'd then also have the reverse you could put over here as a double page. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Lindsay's just compared me to Duke Kaboom and oh my goodness. I'm here for that. Thank you. I'm going to take that as a massive compliment. <sighs> she says that when Duke Kaboom is trying to hit the bullseye in his super jump, we all know he's going to make it, but every time her kids hold their breath. <laughs> Thank you for comparing me to Duke Boom. Okay, one side. The other side. What I'm wanting to happen is for all of the white margins to line up and be equal. So, just taking a second to make sure that I don't get anything skew with. That looks like it'll work. We're there. So if I do this photo over here, because I don't want to get so carried away with my punches, that I lose the photo space. Also, I don't want to wipe that on that. Oops. So I have this right here. Ow, the drawer tried to eat my fingers. That's not polite. Okay. So I can give this a white mat while I'm here. Jocelyn, ever the voice of reason. Jocelyn says, could you make just white, could you just punch three white cardstock circles and a strip of white? Yes, of course you could. You could do all sorts of things to have three circles over here. I just wanted to try it this way. That's all. This way. And then these small ones here. Now I didn't take a tripod with this to Disneyland Paris, and I only took one lens. Um, but I took these the same way I would take my tripod pictures where I'm using the remote so you can't see my hands because I'm holding the phone as the camera remote behind me and um, but I just we posed ourselves so that I could put the camera up on the I think it was on like a planter or a bench or something anyway there was some sort some sort of outdoor furniture there and I got the camera to sit there 
and use that as our tripod substitute. Hello, Leanne! <laughs> Jocelyn's here for the less stressful version where you just stick on circles. It's fine. Whatever way you like. It's not as bad as when I messed up using the main con live television. <laughs> that was on the shop uh, on the shopping channel. And I it had all gone really, really well. And then the very last technique that I tried to show right as we were about to cut to commercial or whatever it was, <laughs> I realized I put the pieces on in the wrong order so it didn't work. And so I didn't want them to pull it up and I was like, Yes! And you could try all sorts of great techniques like this. And then put my hands right down on top. Like, please, to the presenter, don't show it. I've messed it up. Um, yeah, that was not my finest moment. But all the others have gone well. <laughs> now, will there be room? Yes, if I tuck the small photos under. And I think that works. Oh, and I'd kind of thought about putting them as a strip, hadn't I? Right. What about, will they fit on this scrap of yellow? They will! I love paper serendipity like that. Is it ironic that I'm covering up the word sunshine when we're clearly posing in the rain? I'm cool with it, I'm cool with it. It's yellow, that's all that needs to matter. What size are the smaller pictures? Three by four. Yep, yep, yep. Just two portraits printed on a four by six. Right. So I'll be able to bring in more yellow this way. I've already inked that red. Good. Okay. Then this needs, I know I've put a white mat behind it, but I'd also like a colorful mat. So let's look. What might be best for that? So I actually really like the A side of this cut apart as a mat for this. So I need to find where would I be okay <laughs> with cutting it. Oh, so I just lose, that's okay, yeah. I'll take it from this corner here. That's fine. <laughs> Cassie says it wasn't rain, it was magical dewy droplets. Oh no, Corey. Corey just cleaned up and organized all her old kit scraps, but she doesn't know where she put them. That's not hashtag organized, no. <laughs> That's okay, Cassie sent me a Venn diagram of um, things you don't know where you put them. Things you put in a very important place so you wouldn't lose them, but you still don't remember where you put them. And then the question was, what about things I can't find because they're in my own hand? Well, that's the part of the Venn diagram that you're holding in your own hand. Felt seen. Highly accurate. Yes, this is all going to fit over here. Yay. Okay. And this is going to get cut in the middle. Good journaling down here. Square that one up there. No, yes. Let's see. No, it needs an angle. Okay, so just a little bit. Then two, 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 two. Figure out where the top should go. You just need a straight edge. Line it up with the bit that you've already stuck.
So it's going across into the white margin at the bottom, so I'm going to make it go into the white margin at the top as well. There we go. And then it can legitimately be our secret that that's not one giant tag. Yep, yep. I might pull it down a little bit, but for now it's going to stay there. Uh-oh. What's wrong, Corey? We're not frozen on this end, so are we good? Are we good? Or I'm try going out and coming back in. Okay. Hello, Sophia. <laughs> oh no, children using your phone <laughs> or your laptops, right? Laptop. Now, I might want to lift that one up. She says, as if it's a question. Right. Pop it up. Pop it up, pop it up with poppy holes. Oh, it's all right, Corey, don't worry. Sometimes, if you're watching on the YouTube app on your phone, um, the YouTube app does some really wacky, weird stuff where it puts a tremendous amount of stuff in your phone's like memory, like how much it's storing. So you know when you when your phone tells you like, you don't have room for more pictures. And you're like, sorry, how could that be? And then I go to my iPhone storage and it'll be like, YouTube is now nine gig. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, and so I have to delete and reinstall um, YouTube and then it fixes all my problems in the world. <laughs> Not in the world, just on my phone. Um, so yeah, sometimes YouTube gives you weird glitches and sometimes I recommend just uninstalling and reinstalling for no apparent reason. I don't know why it should work that way, but there you go. Okay, did I stick the yellow in? I think I did. Yes. So that one's gonna go there, this one's gonna go here. I know it's going over some of the circles a little bit and that is okay. Because I don't want it to not feel connected to that. <laughs> Cassie says this tag has been to the stretching room in the Haunted Mansion. You're right. Is it me or is this tag actually stretching? Well done. All right. Ooh, Casey finished every last scrap from her September Best of Both Worlds kit last night. And now she's going to start on October. Fabulous. Excellent work. All right. Let's load up the insides of these circles. Okay. Now, what to do? So I like to, let me see, show you what all this, the punches I've put on my desk. So I have a heart. I have this cool dimensional star, but a normal star would work too. I have a pinked circle. I have a Mickey head, because it's Disney. I have, is it to the point where I don't need to say because it's Disney, I should just say because it's me? I don't know. Um, and I have my favorite three labels. Okay, so I got all those out from the beginning. If I need to go to the punch basket and get more, I can do that too. Now, could also start with a circle inside. Um, you'd need to go down a size from this. So I could do that with dies, but at the moment I'm going to try using other things. So let's have some yellow. going to be a lot of edging to layer these all up. So for example, that could get tucked right there. Like that. Let's just stick as we go. Yeah. And 
then here's my six by six in this kit. It is. And I'll this one out too. Okay. So I got lots of different colors in that. So for example, let's go to this square here. And get a red pinked circle. Georgia says, the pink pink and white star punch, does that cut and emboss? Yes. I will show you in just a moment. So then I can do pinked circle here. A star. The only thing I don't like about this one is be it doesn't have a clear bottom, so you have to... It does have this little thing around the outside so that hopefully you can see where you're punching. So there we go. Yep. Can you see the dimension there? So it embosses, whoop. Yeah, so that's got a little dent. And then you adhere it by putting a papio underneath there so it doesn't get squished. Yeah. Ah, Debbie's thinking she's going to round these corners. Maybe just the outside corners. Maybe the inside ones too, I don't know. Um, yeah, she's going to do some corner rounding to emphasize the circle. Circleness. Okay. I'm not sure where that's going to go yet, but somewhere. And let's have Oh, I kinda like that with the I feel like the bubble can walk. That's not what this part is. But I like it anyway. Alright. Inked. Then I could use the little, the little label with a different paper. would work. I know they're different colors, but I think I think it might work. Let's just have some play. Is this so super tiny? Do you want me to zoom in on the punch pieces so that you've got a little bit, so that it's a bigger part of the screen? I can always zoom back out again later. Let me know what you think. label can come down to this side, this one and go the other way. Now at this point I'm not done with that but I get to a point where I just think it would be right to move on to the next one and make this stop beeping, don't worry. No more beeping. And yeah. So 
Sarah says she needs a Mickey punch, but it might be uh, one day when she goes back to the States because they're shipping. Um, check. They quite often have Mickey punches in stock at scrapbook.com. You can check what the shipping will be there um, or check eBay. Sometimes people buy them to work on just like an album of their trip and then when they're done, they don't want it anymore. Um, so there we go. Yeah. Sometimes you can find both clothes for the parks and tools and stash for scrapping your park trips from people who are only going to do it once and they don't want it after that. <laughs> okay. Um, next up. So then I need like a narrow one here. And I don't want to repeat it exactly, but I'm okay with doing kind of some basic um, repetition, like the label and the label just moved to the other side. It somehow got this part sticky, so I'm going to fix that. Right, we haven't done a heart yet, so let's have a heart. else do I want on here? Do I want a circle as well? Let's have a look. This needs blue. Trying something here. <laughs> Can I get just that little... Yeah. So there's a bunch of green here, but it's pretty much not gonna show by the time I've layered it where I want it to be. So this time, see the star, uh, the circle is over that label there, but this time it's gonna be underneath. get those kind of pieces that same amount on this one so I've done a plaid I've done a yellow let's see if I can do a blue let's use that same one that I used for the mat labels here all right yeah do it this way so I can see that I'm not cutting into another Three by four by accident. Blooper, there we go. one back over to this side here. Looks like they're alternating. Left, right, left, yeah. Now this one comes out way further. That's okay too. 
because I don't want them to all be identical at all. Um, right, but I think I will repeat the two label sizes and the pink circle, but then on this one I'll use the star punch. Cool. Might not use that particular paper that I did for the sample. Okay, I need one of these, but that's the same one, so not that one. Not that paper. Hold on, I've got a little strip of this left. Might as well use it. Oh, Carrie says, What is my top photo spot in Walt Disney World? She is going in four days. Lovely, Carrie. Okay. Well, tell me about your group. Do you want my favorite place for a picture of you? Do you want my favorite place for a picture of a group of grown ups or a family? Tell me who's going. Um, and are you doing all four parks? Yes. And I will tell you my favorite spots. Um, right, so. What would those be? Well, I feel like you need a purple wall photo. <laughs> I'm gonna give you some walls. <laughs> okay, so in Magic Kingdom, in Tomorrowland, um, there is a wall that is purple. <laughs> it has a mural on it. And it's kind of geometric. So one side has the mural and then further down the same wall, is, it fades out to just solid purple. And, and it's a funny little thing because it has um, really beautiful light. So um, it's a bit of a niche spot because it is just a painted wall, but the light there is really lovely and soft for most of the day. So, um, it's really nice for a little portrait, but it won't scream Disney, but it's a, it's a spot I would say, go for it. Um, other places, go to the wishing well at the side of the castle. So that's on the Tomorrowland side of the castle. Um, so you could do both of these in one shot. So the reason I say that is you'll want to get in front of the castle when you walk up Main Street and you'll want a picture of you with the castle behind you. Of course you will because you're going to enjoy your trip and because you're a scrapbooker and because it makes an epic photo. However, because of that, so will everybody else. But if you carry on going around toward the, that side when you're going to Tomorrowland over here, and you're following my imaginary map down Main Street, Castle, and go around the right-hand side as you're looking at it, that's where the wishing well is. And hardly anybody goes over there. <laughs> and so you can go to that spot and you have the castle behind you without a million people. Just you and the castle. Cool, cool? Um, yes. Where's that yellow grid? I've got yellow grid here and here. I want yellow grid in this one too. Okay, so I'm gonna do the circle. Then, do, do, do. Um, oh, and underrated spots in Magic Kingdom. Tom Sawyer Island. So if I go to Magic Kingdom to escape the reality of the world, I go to Tom Sawyer Island to escape the reality of all the people at Magic Kingdom. It's quiet, it's serene, it's fun, it's simple, and it's really pretty. So get the little floaty thing that takes you over. Sometimes it has pirates on it too. And um, that takes you over to Tom Sawyer Island and have a little wander. Also very photogenic, but very quiet. Good for the brain <laughs> to have a nice little break and then go back out into the fun. Okay, um, right. Epcot. When you do Spaceship Earth, the big shiny golf ball, when you come out, um, when you come out, 
there's a, a wall. It's hot pink. And it has like a little stripiness like this. Curvy stripe. And again, it's a spot that gets really good light. Um, so that's the bubblegum wall. Again, one of those places, just like the purple wall, that's going to be subtle, not screamy Disney, but it's really cute and photogenic. And it will give you good light. Trying to find where this will be. I have to guess. Did I get it right? Not quite. <laughs> also, I did it upside down. Oh, Shamal. Can I just refold all the little embossing lines? I don't see why not. But no, they're not agreeing. They're like, what did you do, lady? Try again, try again. What about that plaid? That's better. Plaid. Ink. Now we're doing for time. Oh, we're good. We're good. <laughs> Corey says you can always find the purple wall by following the YouTubers and the Instagrammers because it's where they congregate to take their food fix and video talks. It's true. Because the lighting is really good. And the background's not so distracting that you wouldn't focus, that you'd focus on that instead of them. Um, yeah. Da, da, da. Oh, oh. This is true. Corey points out Epcot is a construction zone. Last time Corey was in Epcot, the um, bubblegum wall was in hiding. Um, that might still be the case. There's a lot of construction going on. That's like um, studios at Disneyland Paris. It's there's just bulldozers all over the shop. Um, we need Leslie here to tell us. She's she's there all the time, but um, but I don't know. All right, now each one of them has a big pop shape, a pink circle, two layers of labels. So we've done all that. Uh, da, 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 da. Now what? So now smaller things. And anything, I don't know. The die cuts are gonna be pretty big, I think. But I'm just gonna have a little flip in case something goes, actually no, put that on your layout. Oh, because things like this could work. If there's any text pieces that match, I don't think there's going to be. That one's a maybe. But it's the only one, isn't it? Yeah, okay, so maybe not. Die cuts, too big. Come here, come here, come here. Now, do have gems. Hello, Kirsty! I do like little rows of gems with the long narrow tag. One of those days where you're like, Shamal, just learn how to use tweezers. She's the same age as me, and the last time she was at Disney, she she was 15. So she doesn't think 
<laughs> she could contribute to where to take photo conversations. That's hilarious. Well, when we did our first um, Florida trip as a family, the Adhesive Avenger had been once as a child when the Cake Castle was up. So he was there for the 25th anniversary. And I had been twice as a child, once when there was only Magic Kingdom, and once when there was Magic Kingdom in Epcot, because we won a trip to the opening year of Epcot. Um, so, <laughs> oh my, um, that first trip back, I, I did not know anything. <laughs> and yet there were still things that felt familiar and wonderful when I got there, which cracked me up. But I had been to Disneyland a lot. But um, but always liked for tiny little trips, not for a holiday. It would be that I would go to the trade show and then um, I'd add, well, I'd, we'd get things set up and then I'd go to Disneyland. <laughs> okay. Cassie, that middle one's for you. Cassie doesn't like odd numbers. But I've done five here and five here. But I've done one with four just for Cassie. Georgia was also there for Cake Castle. Amazing. I did not see the Cake Castle. And, oh, you know, life regrets. <laughs> All right. Now what else? Let's put some gold mist on it. Because, yes. Kirstie hasn't been, but she watches a lot of Tim Tracker. He's a Disney YouTuber. Um, never a bad thing. He's very good. Oh my goodness, Georgia, back in days of well yore, um, went and landed on the 31st of October and her cab driver gave them all trick-or-treat bags. That's amazing. Okay, so that's got some gold on it now. I need to get gold off the photo. That's all right. Hold up Maleficent. Oh, I think she did all right there. Okay. Um, now, what else to add to those? Because they do need, they need even more. They really do. And we need a title and we need a little bit of embellishment over here to make these things connect. So let's go ahead and get title in place. Big swooshy Y. By the way, we've got extra journaling paper this time because it's one where it's not coated. I love that. So it's going to be called Hey Howdy Hey, um, which we talked about a little bit toward the beginning. So um, partly because it's a catchphrase from Woody and Cassie's just like Woody. But also because when we arrived at the hotel and Cassie saw how um, how Wild Wild West themed it was, we both agreed that we could now get away with saying howdy, even if we were in France. There you go. Oh! Mari is here. 
live for the first time ever. Hello. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to do the howdy in all caps. Oh, I might end up way too wide then. Hold on, have I got a non loopy Y? I do. I love that loopy Y, but I don't think I'm going to have room for it. Let's try this way. No, where are you going to go? So I know this is going to overlap, but the question is how much? on early. Every time I do it, I know I shouldn't, but I do it anyway sometimes. Okay. I don't think the all caps idea is going to work. It's not going to fit. Let's go back to the lowercase. Over that, too much. Oh, Sam says this is this is Sam's favorite layout I've ever done. Why? Thank you, thank you, thank you. W in this font is really wide, so it's still going to overlap, but I think this is going to overlap less. loopy one actually helps because it's to make it feel like it connects. I know lots of you saying use another font but I don't want to. <laughs> I'm stubborn like that sometimes. Um, I've also got last month's letter stickers so I can always go back to that. Now I might do the hay in another font. But I liked, I didn't want to mix, I wanted this all in blue. <laughs> but I am okay with adding like the gold from last month for, um, for the top hay. So let's have a look. That's this. Oh, just got very dizzy, turning myself upside down. Goodness me. Okay. Which means could also use some of these in here. So what do we got? What do we got? Just want simple ones. So we could have a hooray. Some of these are gonna be too. 
too big actually. So you could layer these in. You definitely could. Could I tuck it under there? On top of there with double pop. I kind of like it. Let me put it on the pop dots and have a look. Okay, so do two layers so that it ends up taller. It's too big. Shame. Okay. That's right. I can put it into this grouping over here. Now, what I wanted to do over here was to put in a little bit of embellishment that will make these connect to what's on this side here. So I need a couple more punched taggy pieces. Labels, really. Labels. I don't know why I'm calling them tags. They are clearly labels. So we'll have some in yellow and we'll have some in plaid again. Start with the two bigger ones. Oh, happy birthday, Debbie. Put this one down here. And the other one over top. <laughs> Sophia likes how this title going into uh, that top cluster has given everything a bit of balance. Yep. Almost like I had a plan. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yellow down to this one at the bottom. shapes. Let's go to that small row paper again. So I need a bit of plaid up there and a bit of blue down here. We can do it. Some plaid. Some blue. Right. All four of those. Hello Debbie! You can certainly watch everything from the beginning in Tomorrowland. So if you decide to watch the replay, you can leave a comment and say that you were here, that you watched from the future. Hope the future is treating you well. Um, whether you see it, you know, tomorrow, or if you see it 
long into the future. Um, you know, if you're watching this in your flying car, then excellent. We would love to know that you were here. <laughs> All right. Two. Which one where? I like that. Okay. No, it's too far over. In the middle. There. Some gems. So these are these groupings are more squared up and I did the gems in a line. These are more higgly piggly and I'm going to carry that on with the gems. So the gems are going to be more my usual kind of triangle fun. What else needs to happen on this? Well, I'll need to sort out this tag, which I also have to do on the other um, on the other one from last Friday. Also needs the, the the tag top sorting out. So I will do that. I will do them all at once. <laughs> um, and then the journaling is going to fit here and down to here. In theory, please may it fit. If not, I could add another tag in here. So if you like this design, but you want more journaling space, I've got two ideas for you. Number one, use a ledger here. When you're all done, you, put the, you could fill that whole thing with journaling. Cool. Or, because we're dealing with tags here, plan to have more layers here and have a tag that you could pull out in addition to what's here. So and that's easy to do if you plan it from the beginning because the only thing you would need to do is make sure that your adhesive creates a pocket inside. So the adhesive would be here and here and here, but not here because that's where the tag would come in and out. Yeah. Right. Um, what would it look like if we moved it around? Well, you could certainly do this sort of design. And if you did it um, landscapes this way, you might find that you want your title instead of in this kind of space here, that you want a title that works with that top third pattern paper. Yeah. Um, if you want to do it to the other side, obviously your tag would probably want to go the other way. <laughs> Everything's upside down here, but obviously it works to this side too. Um, and you could definitely do this as a double page and you'd end up with the mirror image next to it because you'd still have two thirds of this paper to go here if you started with full sheets, which I did not. Um, and you'd have one third of this page paper left. So you could build this again on the second page. All right, now then these, if you want them to have more. And um, another thing that you could do would be to add in tiny punches, which I might do. I've, I've been very silly in putting the gold mist on midway through because now I keep smudging it. So I don't want to start adding more fiddly bits to this one. I can tell that all of that is still very much wet. Um, but yes, those little tiny micro punches that have the little tiny shapes are great for filling in spaces here. Also teeny tiny stamps. Did I start with a smooth white cardstock that would have made it nice and easy to stamp in there? No, I did not. I used textured. So that makes that a little more difficult. But both of those things are really good for adding in here. You could also mix in normal enamel dots with the gems, tiny puffy stickers, all of those little elements that are tiny can be added into here until you've got just the balance of the right amount of more that you like. Okay? All right, so I think that is the, the scrapping part of today finished. Let's get this week's awkward thumbnail.
And there we go. And the other thing is, if you go to my YouTube channel, I've now haven't got quite all of the November lives put up there yet, but a bunch of them so you can set the reminders and I will get the rest added. And I was doing it right before we went live and I just stopped when we got to time to go live. <laughs> so I'll get the rest added up there too so you can set the reminders, but they are the usual times, Mondays, 1.30 p.m. UK time and Fridays, 9.30 in the morning UK time. And they're all right here. But if you get that little reminder, then it's a little bit more reliable than the notifications that come through just for subscribing and clicking the bell, which I would love for you to subscribe and click the bell, but I also know that it's kind of a weird system and I'm never quite sure why I get notifications sometimes, not others on all the channels that I subscribe to. So um, the, when you do the little button that says set reminder, that seems to be way more reliable. <laughs> cool. Okay, so I'll put it back on the desk cam if you want to um, screen grab that for your reference if you want to give it a try. And do you want me to hold this up here so that you can see each of these a little closer? Yeah. There we go. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful week and that I see you on Friday, either on the day or from Tomorrowland. Be creative, do wonderful things, and I'll see you then. Thanks so much.